o'clock. That'll be seven o'clock by now. <laughs> and we'll start call this the meeting to order. <laughs> please stand for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Commissioner Stacy? Here. Commissioner Zoller? Here. Commissioner Whitner? I'm here. We'll sign the journal. And then motion to approve the DVD recording of the previous board session from Tuesday, January 21st, in the written index of that meeting. I'll make that motion. How can I second it when I wasn't there? You I didn't get the. Well, that I, I think you can. I think you can, think yeah. You can, but I can set something. Yeah. I, I think you it would probably be best well. if you would second it, because I, unless I had a written, mm -hmm. well, and I did have a written report of the, of the meeting, so I could second it. You could have watched. Yeah, you I, watched. I, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I did have a written report. I'm sorry. Okay. Second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Approved. Thank you. I what I like what I went ahead and did listed adjustments. Um, I added that to the agenda just so that we could um, add any add anything at this point that we want under whether old business or new business. And then um, Stacy, our county administrator, has added, or any of the clerks have added anything else just to note what was addition to it um, on the agenda so that anybody in attendance and I see it's a standing room only tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You found us, David. I did, and I was trying to find the room. Yeah, that, yeah no, <laughs> There I'm is heat in this one. Um, we would just <laughs> know what's coming up in case somebody doesn't want to leave early because they want to hear what we're going to discuss and so forth. So does anybody have any adjustments? Um, I see we've got one that was removed. I had a few things like... Okay, under old, new? Under old, I wanted to touch on Wolf Creek. Okay. Uh, report on our EMS adventures and then uh, discuss the Thursday meeting time. Yes. Okay. Do you have anything to add? The old, uh, new, to older new business? I would like to elaborate on the, on the snow policy when, when we're ready okay. to talk about Okay, and that's that. listed. That's listed. All right, so this first one was just, we're remo removed that from the original? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that resolution has been removed from, from the agenda. All right, we'll begin with old business and the snow policy. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I uh, contact with the sheriff, and I, I want to get this for public record. Is the level three? There's been a lot of discussion and a lot of concern from area businesses, manufacturing, and retail. And the level three states all roadways are to be closed to non-emergency personnel. No one should be out during these conditions unless it is absolutely necessary to travel. All employees should contact their employer to see if they should report to work. What that means is if your employee employer is working, you have the right, you are considered an essential part of business and you need to go to work. So I just wanted to, to absolutely clarify that because there's a lot of issues in the manufacturing environment that when there's a level three, people think, oh, they can't travel to work. If you're, even though there's a level three, if your employer is open and operating, you are obligated to go to work if you can do it safely. And that's what it states here, and I clarified that with uh, with the sheriff today. And that is, I think those are the levels and their definitions are defined on his website. Yeah. Because I've yeah. checked that yeah. way back before. But the key element start. here is that you, let me see, uh, all employees should contact their employer. It doesn't mean a level three is you can't get on the roads. It means if your company's open, you should still go to work if you can do it safely. Very, very important, I think, that that get in, that get in the paper because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. Level three means you can't travel, don't go to work, shut down, everything. That is not the case. Anybody's kind of not worried about reviewing their snow policies or certainly doing it this year because we have a winter <laughs> with all the snow. All right. Nothing else on, on that from anyone? Okay. Um, 
2014 job fair. Seneca County Jobs Fair is Monday, May 12th, 2014. And I just wanted to list it um, to keep it out there. We're at the point now recruiting the businesses who want to be part of it and which businesses can be part of it, anybody hiring. So if they've got one position or 100 positions, it does not matter. Anybody hiring can be part of the job spare. And thanks to David Zach over here, he created, as on our committee, and as a representative of SEDEC, created an online application. And Nikki, working with, yep, I'm used working to with Nikki and thing. with Carol Owen. Yeah, in yeah. the and the Jobs and Family Services, they've, they've got that down to a nice, slick uh, link. Um, so we will direct people to that. And if they get, um, is it on your site, David? It's on my site. And Brittany, have you seen that? Have you seen the link? Not yet. I'll zip it to you. Okay. Put it on ours, too. We put it on our site, too. Okay, yeah. cool. So that's out there, and that's where we're at now. And we've adjusted, um, still on a Monday, adjusted the time frame a little bit. So our advertised hours are 3 to 6.30. So we're starting a little later for the general job seekers coming. We have yes. some time if they, if they earn a VIP status, um, and all that information is out there as well. But right now our main emphasis is promoting the businesses that will be there, anybody that's uh, hiring help so that we can we can start promoting how many businesses are there and the more more attractive to the seekers. All right, Wolf Creek. Mr. Yeah, Curry. I just wanted to uh, touch base on that again. Oh, good idea. Uh, Mark Zimmerman presented to us last week, and I know you missed that, but he'll do a little dog and pony show that day of, of his uh, final report again, a, a short version, I assume, and we'll take public comments. But the two things that we have to do that day is we have to pass a resolution either affirming they we granted the petition in December of 12. So we either affirm that or we set that aside. And I've asked Nikki to have both those resolutions ready for that yeah. that day so we can just pass that. Under Ohio law, I don't see how we can do anything but affirm it, but we'll discuss that that day. And then the other thing we have to do, if we do affirm that petition, is we have to set the, um, um, the payment schedule, yeah, the assessment schedule. Under law, if it's $25 or less, if my assessment is $25 or less, then I pay it in one payment with my taxes. If it's between $25 and $500, then by Ohio law, I pay it in two payments over two tax periods over a year. If it's over $500, then the commissioner set the schedule. So uh, Mark recommended last week uh, three years or six semi-annual payments. On County Road 16, I guess they did five years, so we can think about that. I'm, I'm not opposed to going either, I mean, either way it works. But uh, that's something else we'll have to pass that day if we affirm the petition. So I just wanted to <coughs> make sure we were all kind of on the same page legally on that. That's all I have on the free. And I know we've you know, had questions <coughs> off and on, but that's the last chance for people to come in prior to that is, that is the, actual, the actual meeting before we take a vote, or hearing, I should say, the hearing. And uh, that's at 10 o'clock Thursday in the Public Safety Building on the fairgrounds. Anything else That's all I have. Okay. Um, EMS. I was just going to update. Uh, Ken and I went to, uh, it's his goal to get around to, and our goal to, to get around to all of the elected officials and just kind of present the need and let them get buy-in into the solution to the need. And we were starting in the areas where there is the most need, which would be the Green Springs squad. Um, so that would be Adams Township, Pleasant Township, and the village. Uh, Ken and I went to Pleasant Township a week or so ago and had a really nice meeting. Um, he did a good job of presenting the need and the, the fact that we're really struggling in the Green Springs squad. And I think once we discussed it for probably 45 minutes, just a back and forth. I think there was a lot of willingness with Pleasant Township to seek a solution among those three entities. And of course, what we would, we don't advertise this too much, but what we would like to see is that basket model. I think that's what we feel would work. And, and I think Pleasant was open to that. We were supposed to meet with Adams Township yesterday. They meet Monday mornings at 8.30. Ken and I showed up at their meeting hall and nobody else showed up. They were all out plowing snow after they made a few calls. <laughs> So they're meeting tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning, and we plan to be there at 8.30 in the morning at Adams Town.
Township and give them the same spiel there. And then the meeting with Green Springs is February the 3rd. So, and I believe Holly might be attending that rather than, <coughs> than me. So that's where it's at. I, we're at the, it's going to be kind of slow, but we want to get the buy-in. We want them to want to do it rather than us saying, hey, you gotta, you got to do this. But when they realize that there aren't many options and, and it's going to fail at some point, sooner maybe rather than later in some areas. So. I, I imagine we'd start to get more questions the more, you know, it's a little bit more than one meeting so far, but, right. you know, we've got a significant investment to Well, the interesting thing is the, the fact that there's service. so many people that don't realize uh, the calls I get and probably the calls you get are what's the county doing about EMS, whereas what we need to make sure that we project and make sure everybody knows it's that it's multifaceted responsibility. It's not just the county's responsibility. It is also the townships and the village's responsibility to play a good part in the solution. And we can't just put it all on, it's not my fault, it's not the board's fault, it's, it isn't a fault. It's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity to grow this system. And we have to, or it will fit. Interesting as we proceed through the meetings, like I said, we've got that investment to protect as well as a service that we would like to see provided. We're not mandated, but we have the investment to provide the service. The, like you said, the part of the arrangement was the people from well, from those I, areas. I just hope that all the meetings go as well as the last few have. Yeah. Um, that was very encouraging. The Pleasant Township Board was very open, and they discussed the they discussed the problems and the and and our goals towards solutions. So. I hope we get that same buy-in from all boards, and I'm sure that we will. Um, it's it's just a, it's a change in the way we think about things. Uh, the volunteer system is is taxed. Very, we're just over. It's too much to ask of people, especially in today's society where industry is not in your backyard. And the map over there makes me realize that. We don't really work and live in the same communities anymore. A lot of times we work outside of where we live, so we just don't have the time to do the volunteer work at the level that we once did. Off the soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thursday's meeting, Thursday with having the Wolf Creek hearing, um, and it's the last Thursday of the month, so we normally have a 10 o'clock meeting on a regular schedule. Can't be two places at one time. I don't, I don't think it makes sense to try to do it in that setting since that's a hearing. I think that meshes too much. So do you want to try to have it before going out there? And I'm thinking we're going to be out there by 930. You want to, when that's done, reconvene and hold our meeting like at 12, 1230, 1 o'clock back at our boardroom? I, I don't want to presume too much, but Stacy asked me earlier, some lady called him, some, some person called and wants to come in yeah. to talk to the board. And we kind of surmised that we might have it at 1 o'clock. I, I hope that's I didn't fine presume too much. You got a problem with 1 o'clock? Yeah, I do on, on Thursday. Um, I've got my company board meetings. It's good. It's, it's on Thursday. Yeah. Um, can, can she come in? It's not a, it's not a, I want to say, Wait, that's, is that start? What I want to say, a, a person from the yeah. public. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So you're there. Yeah. yeah. It's not a person from the public, it's somebody from WSOS, yeah. so it's somebody that could possibly could be rescheduled. Could be supposed to bring them in the following Tuesday? Yeah, I think she Yeah, I mean, unless it's imperative, Which I would we have a work session prefer that. That yeah. yeah. following Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, I mean, not that she can't be in the agenda. Right, right. Whichever one of them can work. Yep, yeah, I'm going to decide. I can let her know where they want. I need to be difficult. Oh, I mean, exactly. I can work around if I need to, but it is. Yeah, I didn't know. I, she just asked me when it would be a good yeah. time, and I, I said maybe one day. That's fine. So what time do we want it? So you're you're pretty much out once the hearing's over? Yes. Yes. We need to have the meeting, so we might have had the meeting without Friday anyway. How, how much if we, business I mean, do we have? It's our month. I didn't see the when I was here Monday there was only a few resolutions. I don't know what else came in today. No. Can we not no. have our board meeting right after the uh, the or well we got can we do it prior? No, but Prior. I'm afraid we don't know how long the hearing will last. We don't know if that hearing will last an hour will be done or if it go on. And I, I don't want to, when it's done, just call the our meeting to order. Well, and we there's still people there. So we would have to do it. Yeah. We could do it at 9 o'clock out there. 
we'd have to be out there earlier. I don't know. I'm, I'm and then we'd be set up versus if we try to have it at 9 in our office and get out there at 9.30. Right. I don't want to count on that. Yeah, it's not until 10 o'clock out to the right. civil defense. People You're saying to be there early. Though. Yeah, we could have it out there at 9. People will roll in at 9.30 probably. I think we have more than a half, half hour's worth of... From what I've seen Monday, we, we wouldn't. Have to wait if it... I think I, I think Monday we only had like one or two more resolutions come in and they were financial so I think half an hour should be fine as long as there's not a lot of old business or additional new business no no we didn't schedule anything well I would suggest out there just so we don't we already be moved and so we got nine o'clock nine o'clock at the public safety okay. building obviously the building is already reserved for us yeah, I'd, I'd like to be done by 9.30 yes. so we wouldn't be yeah. people confusing people as they come in and think yeah. they're late for the meeting. Yeah. 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 So 9 and come on the regular meeting. Be done by 9.30 and the hearing starts at 10. Under old business, I guess we move on to new business and the bill vouchers. I have uh, bill vouchers <coughs> six through ten. I have resolution authorizing a fund transfer be made to the County Road 38-9.32 Bridge Project Fund 183, moving $12,040.68 from the Maintenance Repair Fund contract projects to the transfers in of the 183 project fund. I have supplement to the permanent appropriations for the Sheriff Commissary Fund 028, moving $3,100 into equipment. I have resolution authorizing an appropriation adjustment within the general fund, moving $624.99 contract repairs to supplies. We have a supplement to the permit appropriations for the real estate assessment fund, 016, giving $750 into the HSA account. I have a supplement to the permit appropriation for the dog and kennel fund, 035, putting $2,000 into her animal claims. I think that's all the resolutions I have. We approve the resolution. Second. Approved and second. Approve the resolutions. Any discussion on anything? Okay. Call the roll. Commissioner Wagner? Yes. Commissioner Zoller? Yes. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Resolutions all approved. I guess that moves us to business which we didn't have anything listed I listed a couple of meeting things coming up um, that I wanted to make sure we mentioned before we were done so we can go to uh, public comment at this time we've heard from Ken what about you David you got anything you want to add <laughs> yeah it's uh, things were things were proceeding very very nicely it was nice to get a chance to work with Carol and Nikki and others on the job fair which I think is a tremendous tool and I think Carol and Nikki have done a tremendous job with that and we're looking forward to assisting with that. We're, uh, we're continuing to work on a couple of leads uh, on the retail side uh, that we're developing. We're beginning to inventory the properties in the, in the, in the county. We've secured uh, uh, comprehensive information on the 2,400 businesses that exist in the county and we've proceeded to um, uh, purchase a, a low cost but uh, significant uh, customer relationship management system and we're working on uploading that information as a basis to begin to manage all of the businesses in the county as our customers. Um, we, uh, we've implemented social media um, and kind of a way to begin to communicate what we have going on and we're going to begin to work with uh, the Advertiser Tribune and others to be able to effectively get them information because they have the biggest uh, you know they have the, the biggest access. We want to make sure that they can uh, we can give them information that uh, aligns with what they're trying to communicate um, based on uh, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, continue to build relationships, both the business and the county. It's always fun to come out here. My first time out to Republic, 
like to be out here when the sun's shining a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and after I haven't eaten dinner, I'll have to go get some fat at the pizza bar. Uh, so it's good to get out of the county. And it's, uh, you know, outside the city of Tiffin. There are people that live outside the city of Tiffin. And, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to experiencing a lot of that. I had dinner last night with um, John Arnold and his wife and heard about the park district and was, you know, uh, listening and, and hearing about what a great park district we have. And so I'm looking forward to a little warmer weather when I can walk some of the county parks, and it's a tremendous system, I think a tremendous asset. So uh, a lot of really good things going on and uh, uh, just getting started. And I, I would say that the biggest thing is that both the commissioners and everybody that I've met has just been really friendly and great to work with. And so everything I was hoping the community would be so far, it's turned out to be. So I'm excited, having fun, and uh, moving forward. Does the uh, software you talked about you implemented, does that like give you the rundown, like what types of business line there and number of employees that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, so all the it yeah, is? it gives it's very very comprehensive. So, so it's actually So you have to upload all that put all that data I into I have it? the information in basically spreadsheets. Okay. And so I need to create basically I have the water. Yeah. Now in the in the system that we're going to be managing, I create the different buckets so I know what data I want to put in. Okay. And then it allows me to slice from everything from um, NAICS and SIC and SIC codes, so the type of business number of employees, sales, uh, location, down to the specific four digits on the zip. Uh, so for example, I'm looking at downtown Tiffin, being able to isolate that. Uh, it has the executives and the people that run it at various executive levels. Uh, it tells me um, uh, um, several other pieces of information. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Uh, would, is that also able to do the, well, you probably had that anyway, but an inventory of, of available space for the no, use? That, that, I, that I have, system? no, that, that is something that I have begun. So the interesting thing about um, Tiffin and Seneca County thus far is there are a number of properties that aren't represented by real estate agents. So a number, if, if a property is represented by a real estate <coughs> agent, typically it's online and you can find it. But there are a lot of properties that are owned, call this number. And so I began to take pictures, I began to get that contact information. Uh, we purchased uh, for $500 a year, we're gonna be able to have a Tiffin slash Seneca County site that will be have it online. So anybody who's looking for commercial, or industrial, or office space in the county uh, can go to this and just see those. And so we can be very, we can be very judicious about what we show or what we don't show in that. Um, so that we don't step on anybody's toes, but we, you know, I don't want to send uh, I don't want to send a, a prospect to be able to see properties that are in uh, Finley. All respect to Tony Reed, who I, who I love, uh, <laughs> but I want them to be able to see our properties. And so uh, I got the uh, just signed the contract for that yesterday, and so we're going to begin to get that set up. And I'm just beginning to gather my information, get pictures. It'll have GIS capability. So anybody who have space in the county, you could list on that. Yes, so we could, it's free. I don't charge our space on that. Absolutely, anybody can. And, and when a realtor has a space, we put the realtor as the contact information. We want them to make, you know, to make money and make a living. So yeah. all we're about trying to do is find a place so businesses can find what's available. Um, I just had a conversation with. I just met uh, Jessica Bailiwicks downtown, and uh, she was saying that would have been great, you know, to know what what's available. So that's one of the key services that an economic development organization forms is site selection. I'm looking for space, I need 2,000 feet First of office, questions. I need yeah. 20, I need 20, 40, 60,000 square feet of industrial. And to my surprise, there are significant, I'm already finding industrial spaces for lease in the county and in the city, which I didn't think there was any that existed. Uh, whether it's on North Washington, they have 24,000 that used to be right near where Viaduct is. With they got a, a bay in the back where I was out visiting uh, Commissioner Zoller's uh, on Land Tech, and there's a facility on the, the south side of Second Avenue that's that's available. So just beginning to catalog and inventory that, yeah. So that's a that's a critical function that, that we perform that that we're looking to uh, to really promote. And that would include fostering listings and that sort Well, that's interesting. That we cost? will so that's a really interesting question. We will have the capability. But we will also have the ability not to uh, list Fostoria. And that's something that I would work with the FEDC and see what makes sense. I mean, I don't have the answer. I know that we have the capability to be able to choose to exclude or include those properties as we choose to do. I don't, ha I don't know exactly what I'm going to do there. 
they've been very successful in um, in getting their properties on the state system, but I don't think they've purchased the local version. Uh, and so kind of what our arrangement's gonna be, right now they're in transition, looking for a new director, we're gonna help them, what kind of help is that gonna be? Is there gonna be any remuneration for that? We, we have to work through those things. But I like having the ability for us to choose whether or not we, we, we list those, those, those buildings or not. Right. So I don't know what, Commissioner, what makes sense at this point, yeah. but. Yeah. Are ours in the state system or they will be? They will be. They will be. They will be. So we have not had a lot, anything on the state system, not to speak of. We've been able to, um, you know, Eagle Rock's kind of been out there, but one of the things that I'm going to do, which Fostoria has done a good job, is getting a lot of the buildings and, and properties online. The other thing that I, I tend to use is, um, I tend to use the system also for commercial. So, um, and a lot, some economic, that's not as common, uh, but um, I get it all in there. And then we use it for our purposes to have it available. I think it's, I think it's key, especially if you're doing downtown development, if you're doing office development, retail, commercial. Uh, I'm amazed at how many properties are just, here's a phone number, they're not real estate agent listed. And so, the interesting thing is that there really isn't a, and from people I've talked to and what I've seen, in other communities I've been, there's a dominant or two dominant uh, industrial commercial office realties, realty companies or realtors. And there isn't one in Tiffany. Um, where I came from in Springfield, you had, you know, you knew you were talking Levine Realty or you were talking to Link Helmuth, and those were the, now, Link Helmuth did residential. So the bottom line is I think we're going to perform a great function in being able to really make that. Because the bottom line is we want businesses to be able to find what they need and get them what they need and give them options. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate your no nonsense, uh, get it done attitude. Yeah. Thanks for coming on Way to Republic to see us. Gives me a chance to get out of here. I know it's east now. You know, it's, it, it, it's a process of learning where things are. Yeah. I'm like, okay, 15, 15 miles, 10 to 15 miles east of. That's the that's the beginning. That's how you begin to learn. So I think, I'm gonna learn I think what I told you about fat heads. That, that you did. That was. You know, I, I, I wish I could have. Uh, uh, could have uh, eaten there, but I will. I will. <laughs> Anything else? Your hope public comments. <laughs> ready? All right. Well, I just I wanted to make sure I mentioned um, the regional planning is having their annual meeting on February fifth at six thirty. That is in Fostoria. I don't know if either of you are planning to go. If RSVP yes. Peter will RSVP. Okay. Because I've got another meeting that night, so I know I can't go. But I was hoping that not to be represented at all. Um, and Seneca Habitat for Humanity annual meeting. I don't know if we routinely have gone to that, but I assume you guys get the same thing I got. February 22nd, that's a little ways off yet, but that evening and I am gone that weekend. So that is that is Saturday or Sunday. But anything else for the good of the word? Yeah, I, I just, I wanted to just get this in the public record too, because I think it's, it's, Kind of patting herself in the back. When uh, when I read the paper the other week about uh, the mayor and, and the and the unencumbered uh, carryover that they had, and I'm saying like, oh, that's yeah, pretty good. Where where do we stand at? And our unencumbered um, carryover as of 12:31:13 is two million three hundred twenty-five thousand four hundred seventy-eight dollars and thirty-seven cents. That is up from the carryover in 2012. Of seven hundred forty-six thousand five hundred seventy-three ninety-two, realizing I mean there's unencumbered and can be a lot of issues, but I think not that I want to pat ourselves in the back. I think we need to the pat the citizens of Seneca County for investing in Seneca County to allow us and with our prudent management of uh, uh, cash management here, we've been able to increase that. Another thing I think it just is noteworthy is the total general obligation bonds for the county uh, decreased in 1231-12 for 3,585,000 and it's decreased down to 3,125,000 in roughly, roughly six years at current debt payment we can, we can have the county out of debt, out of debt for the general obligation bond. I just think from a information standpoint it's important that that again not to pat ourselves in the back 
but I think we've done a pretty darn good job last year of, of handling the county's market. Yeah, that, that unencumbered, you know, that carryover bounces around, but I think the year before it was like 1.5. Uh, what I got. Then it went to 7, and then it went up to 2.3. But that's the highest it's been a long time. Yeah, I mean, it starts uh, 12 was 746,000, 11 was 1 million, okay. 60,000, 10, 1 million, 6,000, 2009, 920,000. And 2.3 million this year. And this I said it no. 12, 31, 13. Yeah. And uh, with just bonds, we could be out of completely paid off in like in six years or so, but you can't buy those bonds out, so we're we're locked into that 2023 date. Yeah, yeah. But but nice there will be a substantial part lobbed off in 2019. 2019. 2019. So again, I'm, I just, from public record, I think it's important that we just be aware of that. That's it. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Nothing else? Go to the order. I think a motion that we adjourn and a second. I told you, David. We are adjourned. <laughs> Easy at 7.30.